Well, hello, folks. Fat Guy Flies RC. Well, I'm going to do something that I told you I was going to do. Um, in front of you is the Arrows Trekker ready to fly. Okay. Now, let's just... The scenario is that you have flown the dog mess out of this thing. You love the plane, but now you're ready to move on to something else. So you took Fat Guy's advice and you went out and got yourself a large, you put your money in your investment, your main investment. You got yourself an NX-10, okay? And then you're thinking, well, wait, that won't work. Dang it, I, I bought this, but that won't work with that. Now, what do I do? So you, you chatted with Fat Guy, and he said, well, yeah, you, you're going to have to put a Spectrum receiver in there. Well, yeah, but I still want beginner level, and I want self-leveling, and I want all that, but I want to be able to fly it on my new transmitter, but that way I can still grow. Well, you can do that. You got yourself your transmitter. Go to Hobby Zone or wherever you can get one. Get yourself an AR630 or an AR631 Spectrum programmable receiver. Okay? Got that. You got your battery. So how are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to show you how to take this ready to fly with the, and I understand the arrows transmitter and receiver and everything that comes with this works fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but that's all you can ever do. You can only ever fly this plane with this receiver, with that transmitter. You're locked in. So let's say you still want to fly the plane, but you want to be able to fly other planes. Okay. So you're going to go back to your plane and pull the receiver out. Okay. And you're going to carefully undo all your leads they're all labeled still okay you're going to go to your new AR630 brand new never been used receiver okay well I don't know if this one's ever been used or not but it's, it's mine and you're going to plug it in and on a spectrum okay and you know that this has to be secured in the plane somehow well I'm going to tell you how we're going to do it and this is how you do it when you put a spectrum receiver that is a gyroed receiver, it either has to go straight with the fuselage, on the side, upside down, or it can be, uh, what's this, right to left, but it, but it has to be this way, this way, or this way. It can't be at a weird or strange angle. Just in basically like 90 degree type positions, okay? So in this case, we can put it actually actually on the wood and you can put it doesn't have to be it can be to one side or the other but we're going to put it on the wood we're going to put the leads this way no we're not we'll put it this way and we're going to actually uh, not gorilla glue but we're going to use double sided tape and put it down but for right now we're going to plug it in with spectrum think of tear throttle aileron elevator rudder those are always in that order so your first channel on a spectrum receiver is always your bind channel or dead channel okay it just provides power or programming so don't look at that your actual channel one is actually the second channel down which is your throttle so you're going to take your throttle always take the lightest color lead this always goes towards the top of the receiver where the receiver has the logo that's the top so the yellow wire is going to go in the number one slot and the yellow wire is going to be towards the top okay the next one is always going to be aileron okay so i got to find my aileron there's my rudder elevator there's my aileron the one that's not labeled okay and you'll find that as you do more of these models you'll find the one that's not labeled here's the aileron and then you're going to go to elevator and then you're going to go to rudder. Kind of like tear, but with an A, with the A first. Rudder's only, always channel four. Always channel four. So the top of your receiver, when you're done, you got everything plugged in, should look like that. All the yellow should be on the top. See all the yellow leads are on top? Okay. All right, great. Now what do I do? Well, now you need to secure your receiver. Okay, you know where the battery sits, so it's going to be somewhere back away from that. Take you off a little bit. I highly recommend Gorilla double-sided tape. 
That's just what I recommend. Been using it for years. I've never had a problem. Put on the back of your receiver. You don't have any power right now, so you can smash any button you want. And I like to take the scissors and trim off any excess. Just like that. Okay. Make it nice and neat as possible. And then I'm going to take... Grab the receiver. I'm going to just twist it just one time. Just like I see it's kind of twisted. That kind of helps hold those servo leads in place. And I'm going to push all that out, back and out of the way. So I've got room to put that receiver down. Okay. And I'm going to smash it in there. Kind of hold it in place. And this is how it's going to look. See, I've got it sitting nice and level back there. All right. All right, so now what do I do? Now that I've got that all done, see, if I put a battery in, what's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen because you haven't set up a profile yet. Basically, you've got, when this receiver starts sending out signals to the transmitter, the transmitter is going to send signals back to the receiver, This ha the, the signal back and forth has to have a place to land here. Well, if you don't have a profile set up, you're not going to get a thing. So let's do that. I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay. All right. I'm going to add a new model. Okay. Hit create. Now, if you have a lot of models on there, that's going to take a little while. Model select. It's the acro one, okay? Model type. That. Well, I don't know why you always have to go through the screen, but you do. And now we're going to name it, okay? So, I'm going to go A R R O W S, then I'm going to go to space, space, okay, then I'm going to go to, I'm just going to put T, R, E, K, K. Now, this is going to sound weird. I'm going to put a space here, and I'm going to go to 2, and I will tell you why. Because I also have another trekker, Arrows trekker, on this on this transmitter, and that's the Fat Guy Flyer. Okay, we got the model name. Now we're gonna go to aircraft type. Now this is important. You don't have retracts. You don't have flaps. Okay, so in this case, you're gonna pick a normal wing and go down to the next. Okay. Now here, something you can do right here is select your image. Go to standard image, and now you can start scrolling through. And I just want to look for something that kind of looks like the tracker. Well, that, that, that right there looks pretty good. Here, we'll hit with that, because that's the same basic idea. All right, now, before you go any further, I want you to go in here, and I want you to get out of this. Okay, now this is the basic profile, right? Oh, well. Hit your function list. Let's go ahead and do a throttle cut. Highlight it. He say throttle cut, what's that? That's a switch that you can designate to turn your motor on or off. Highlight it and then pick whatever switch. See how it's highlighting and flashing now? I'm like H, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull the H here and look, H was just selected, then we'll hit enter, okay? And that automatically brought up a menu but that tells me now that whenever I start, when these two things, the receiver, the plane, and the transmitter start talking to each other, I can turn that prop off, which is a feature that didn't come with a ready-to-fly uh, trekker, which I didn't agree with. I think you should have a throttle cut, especially for a beginner. But now I do, okay? So I got my throttle cut. So that means I'm ready for these two things to start talking to each other, okay? Great, I'm excited, I'm pumped, what do I do? All right, now, 
In the old school way, you would turn your transmitter off, plug in your battery, activate your bind, and then hold this back on and, and turn it back on, hold down the bind, it would bind. You could still do that. But with this, this NX10, I don't, I don't have to do that. All I have to do now is plug in my battery, okay? And then I'm gonna smash the bind button on the top. The very, there's a bind button, it's got the spectrum symbol on it. You smash that, hold that down for a few seconds and it starts flashing. And what that's doing is opening itself up to receive a binding signal, okay? So now we're gonna go here and we're gonna go down to bind. And what this does, it takes it out of the radio signal just like it was turning itself on for the first time. See how that just went out? Binding. DSMX 22 milliseconds. Telemetry. Look at that! Hey, that sounds just like it did before. Cool. I'm ready to go. No, you're not. Now you have communication. Okay, you have communication. All right. Now let's see if that throttle cut, how that works. Stay away from the prop. And if you're in, really, I should have took the prop off, but uh, for demonstration. Okay, I'm away from the prop, so that switch is down. So if I pull up on that switch, which is my H switch, look, I can hit throttle all day long. I'm safe. But the moment I put that down, oh, it works. Well, I'm gonna put that back off because I'm inside, I don't wanna get cut. But I still got communication. All right. At this point, what you would need to do is say, okay, cool, cool. I, I can fly. I got communication. Well, wait a minute. What about self-level and safe and gyro and all that stuff that I paid for? I want to show you how to do that. We know at this point right now, you have the basic setup. You could go out and fly this plane right now reliably and have a good time. However, you've got an AR630 receiver in there. You've got safe, you've got self-level, it was safe, which is three assisted fly down below, or it's self-leveling, beginner mode. You've got AS3X. You've got all these neat things that you, that you paid for that you want to set them up. So let's do that, okay? We don't have to take a bind plug out of here. That's the wonderful, or that's the wonderful thing about those kind of receivers. You're good. Bind, you're, you're good. You don't have to worry about that now. Put the cap back on. All right. We are now ready to do forward programming and make sure safe and the gyro works. Okay? So, but the first, and this is for any plane, anytime you're setting up forward programming and you're going to program safe and AS3X and all that, the number one thing you must do first is to make sure all your travels are correct. Okay, which that means if I go right aileron, uh-oh, look at that. I just went right aileron, and look what happened. I'm so glad that happened, actually. Look, look at, look at the, I'm going to go right aileron. Look over there. Watch my right aileron, okay? It goes down. That's not right. If I pull back on the elevator, okay, that's correct. Right rudder, that's correct. But no, my ailerons are backwards. The plane will do just the opposite I need it to do. So let's fix that. We have to fix that before we go any further. So you'd go to servo setup, highlight travel, highlight, go past sub trim, and go to reverse. See where it says aileron? Go down there till you get over aileron. Hit the, the button for enter. Okay, now watch your aileron. Right aileron is now correct. Right aileron, left aileron are correct. Up elevator, down elevator is right. Right rudder, left rudder is right. Okay, all my control servers are now correct. So I can back back out of here. Now while you're here, just to make your life easier, hit the, oh, I'm sorry, hit this middle button, roll your volume all the way up to where you can hear it. Okay? Now, let's do forward programming. All right. Forward programming. I want to, now this is going to be an advanced step, so just bear with me. Other settings. Factory reset. 
I suggest you now because everything's fine, nothing's going to get lost with your model. Go ahead and do this for the for the right off the bat. Hit apply. Hit complete. Okay, what that did is that I wanted to make sure that that receiver is now just like it is when you brought it out of the package. You bought it in the package, you bought, and they tell you you can use it before a program and it program it to a plane. That is the, that receiver is now at that point. So if you were to get, say, someone crashed a plane and they had a receiver like that, but it had their plane still on it, that's how you would remove their settings from that receiver and then get it to where it's completely open. Now, if you don't know, if you had a receiver that you got from another somebody else and you really don't know and you want to take it back and it's already got safe on there and you can't figure out how to do that and you don't have the option for a factory reset, that's an entirely different video, but it is possible. But you'll have to have a programming cable, okay? And all and this is just a little side note, so beginners close your ears on this one. You'd have to have a programming cable, log into your Spectrum, my Spectrum website, register your new receiver, and then do a software update on it. When you do the software update on that receiver, whether it's the current software at all, you know, it doesn't even matter if it's the current, reinstall it. Even if it's up to date, reinstall it. And that will take that, that will jailbreak that receiver and make it open as if you bought that receiver off the shelf. Okay. That's a little side note, has nothing to do with what we're doing here. I just wanted to include that for you people watching that and think, well, you know, what if I get a receiver from somebody and it's already programmed for that plane and I don't know how to get it to where I can use it to something else. I want to make it new again. Well, that's what you have to do. Okay, so back to this. All right, we now have an open receiver that's ready to be programmed for forward programming. Everything is going the right way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to gyro settings. And we're going to do first time setup. Okay, make sure the wing and type's all being configured. We did that already. Everything's the way it's supposed to be. Set the model level and press continue. Well, it looks pretty level to me. Okay, hit continue. Okay, now it says set it on its nose and hit continue. Well, obviously I can't do that from over here. Okay. The model, because the, the AS3X, the computer has to know now which way is down. So I'm going to hit continue. All right, and let me show you what happened. The gyro and the receiver and the transmitter all talked to each other, and they realized that this receiver is in orientation one. So it's happy with that. You're going to hit continue here. And now you're going to hit, don't hit apply yet. Right here is something I have always skipped and told people don't worry about. Well, I'm adding this to it. This is a huge thing that don't, don't, don't skip this. Go ahead and hit, hit that. And what you want to do, you've got this beautiful roller up here, right? Go down here, go over here where, where it's not inhibited. And you're going to go until you hit down to aux three. Don't worry. You think, well, I don't have that third channel. You have it in the transmitter. It's all you need it where it says knob. Okay. That's that knob there. Aux 3, that's what you want. So keep it on there. Go down and hit next. Okay. Then hit apply. Okay. It's going to reboot. It's doing its little dance. Okay. Receiver. You're going to hit click. Now you're going to go back to forward programming yet again. Okay. We got the basic gyro set up. So now we're going to gyro again. And see where it says first time safe setup? Well, that's what we're doing. First time safe setup. Now, this is where it's going to tell you to pick your FM channel. Flight mode channel is what that stands for. Now, I like my flight mode, my safe, always to be on B. Here's my gear if I have it. Here's my bind if I need it. Here is my safe. This is where I like it. This is switch B. This is where you control it. So you're highlighted here. Go down here to B. You don't want it to be inhibited. You want it to be active. Okay. So until you get see where it says aux 2, it went down and picked B and it picked B. Okay. You're happy with that? Go down and hit next. Now you could change that to whatever 
three positions which you wanted, okay? But I pick B. Now, you've already done this, so you're going to hit continue. Okay, now here's where people get all messed up. They say, well, wait, flight mode two, flight mode one. Watch, I'm going to back up a little bit. See here, flight mode two. Look at where that switch is. It's in the middle position. So what do you think is going to happen if I go this way? Flight mode, flight mode one. Middle, flight mode two. Towards me, flight mode three. All right. Now, you can do the AS3X and all that stuff on a two position if you want. If you want to do just save on one and then just AS3X the other, then you could have picked a two position, but you could have used gear. But the reason I use this is because I don't, on this particular transmitter for all the different planes I have, I don't use this switch for anything else but for some sort of gyro or flight mode settings. So you use whatever switch you're used to. Um, it would make more sense for a two position switch, safe on, safe off, than safe off you're in AS3X. But for me personally, I like it because it gives me more options, okay? Gives me more flight mode abilities. So understand, this I'm going to talk to you about in three flight modes. You can do two flight modes and pick a two position switch on the, where we pick B. You could have picked um, H if you wanted to and not use that for throttle cut. Or you could have used your, your A channel for a two position switch. You could have used that, whichever one you want. But I like B, so that's what we're running with. That's what we're doing. <laughs> okay, now. Now we're ready to, now we got our flight modes. All right, I'm in flight mode one, which is the position furthest away from me. And I'm going to hit next. Okay. All right. We already know. We already know. We don't worry. Just go past that. All right. It's telling you it wants to record the model. Safe needs to know what is level flight. You say, well, we already did that. Well, this is where this is where you're telling the model to go back to if you were to let go of the sticks. So we're going to level the model, which we know it's sitting there. Looks level to me. Highlight that. Hit enter. Okay. Now, it recorded that, okay? Its roll is showing a little bit negative. So, in other words, my table's not perfectly level, so that means one wing is up or lower than the other, but that's okay. I mean, what you could do, if you wanted to get it perfectly perfect, because the, the idea is to get these two numbers as close to zero as possible. So, if it's negative roll, negative one, let me... Put a little block underneath that wheel, maybe something that will stay there. Okay, and let me now. I've got that one wheel up, and we'll figure out which way we're going here. Okay, so I'll go back, we're gonna level it again. Look at that, just putting that pe that pair of scissors underneath that wheel leveled, and now it safe is now recorded that as being perfectly level. Okay. So now you're going to go to, because you're not really so much worried about the way the model's sitting. You're wanting to be what would be considered level flight. Okay. So you're going to go to next. Okay. All right. Now these is where you don't mess with this. This is the preset angles and limitations that SAFE has. So you're going to pass that. And this is going to be in flight mode one. Okay. You're going to hit apply. Model's going to go through its dance again. Okay, now you go back to forward program yet again. All right, it takes a little while. Hit your gyro settings. All right, now let's look at these flight modes. Okay, we know that flight mode one is supposed to be safe. Well, well wait a minute, hold on. It says safe mode, it says safe mode, INH. What does that mean? That means inhibited. If I'm in safe and it's inhibited, means it's not working? Yeah, I don't hear nothing. Okay. This is where a lot of people screw up on this too. Is they think, wait a minute, we did. I followed all your steps, fat guy. How come it's not trying to self-level itself? That's because you got to go down here. And you're in flight mode one. Switch furthest away from you. And it's inhibited. So instead, take it to self-level. Then hit back. Get back out of there. All the way. Now, let's look at this. 
Remember, we've already recorded. We saved. Look at that elevator. Look at that elevator. That elevator is going up. Look at that aileron. It's going up. That aileron is going up and holding its position. Okay? Be a little more dramatic there. See how that elevator is tilted up but and holding its position? Now watch the elevator as it straightens out. Okay, now it's back to level. A really quick way, but not necessarily the way I recommend. See, the model is trying. See, to look, look at the control surfaces. That would cause the model to turn back over to right again. So now we know that safe is working. Oh goody, safe's working. But aren't we supposed to hear like gyros or something? Hmm, why are, you know, usually they make noise. What's going on with that? Well, let's, let's just go over that. We're going to go back to forward programming. What, for the fifth time now? Okay. Go to gyro settings again. Okay. Flight mode setting. Now, we lie. Let's say, well, we're okay there. We're going to leave that alone. You're right. Now we're going to go to flight mode two. Pull it towards me. Flight mode two. AS3 is active. Flight mode three is active. How come I don't hear gyros? What's one thing you'll pick up in some of these videos? Some of these, these AS3X videos and stuff. It won't work until you kick the throttle up. Over. Hold on. Gotta get out of there. Gotta get that throttle up over 25%. Turn it back off. Hear that? Them gyros are working now. And let's go back to flight mode one. Again, I can hear them gyros. Wings are holding position. Trying to self right. Okay. Hot. Hot dog, we're in business. Boy, it sure don't seem like those gyros really, you know, I'll go to just AS3X and sure don't look like they're moving very much. Remember that knob? We set up that gain channel. Let me see something. Nothing there. Turn it all the way back up now. Now I can really hear it. But let me show you something. You're saying, well, that, there's not much correction there. Well, let me show you how you can fix that. Go back to forward program again. All right. Go to gyro settings. Okay. Go to AS3X settings. Okay. Gain sensitivity. Let's take our knob and go all the way down to the left or zero. Bottomed out. Okay. Go down here to gain sensitivity. Just bump it one time. Go all the way back out. All the way back out. All the way back out. All right. I've got that all the way down. So there shouldn't be... I don't hear any corrections. I don't hear... I don't, those gyros aren't moving. Now I'm going to turn that knob all the way up. There's a lot of correction now. A lot of correction now. You can't, it's kind of hard to catch it because it goes right back to position. Okay. Now, say you're not dealing with safe, but you want to know for sure your gyro is working correctly. You know, make sure your throttle cut is on. You don't want your throttle, your thing. Put your hand on the control service that you want to check. If I move the wing up, the control service should move against the direction. And it does. It moves against my hand. If I want to see if this elevator correction works, I'm going to pull the wing or pull the tail up. The elevator should turn against that direction. I would push against my fingers, and it does. So what would the rudder do? If I'm going to go this way with the rudder, the rudder should push that way, and it does. It pushes that way. All right. These when well, the gyro is working correctly, it pushes against the force it encounters. 
the, the wind mitigation AS3X gyro, what it does, it realizes that you're flying along nice and pretty and happy and a big gust of wind hits, moving the plane. The computer is smart enough to know that that was not you down there with your, your transmitter, that was the wind. So it compensates to level your light little flying kite, basically, back to, back to keeping as level as possible. It smooths out. It makes a smaller, lighter, little foam plane fly like a much bigger, heavier plane that isn't as affected by the wind like these little foamies are. That's the whole point of wind mitigation. If you're flying to the side of a barn, you're going to fly to the side of a barn. Okay? Safe, safe sensory uh, assisted flight envelope is going to sell, is going to just, is just going to self right you. But if you're still flying the side of the barn, you're not going to fly the side of the barn. Okay? That's all it's going to do. So what we have now, I know if I put my flight mode one that I have self level or safe, flight mode two is just strictly AS3X and gyro. Now, we'll say, well, so what's the big deal about having those, that knob, you know? Why do you want real strong corrections or real small corrections or like no corrections? So I, if I dial that knob all the way down, listen to the gyros. Don't hear it at all. If I put the gyro all the way up, hear it? Hear the correction? All right. The reason for that is now you're flying along and today is windier than what you're used to. Okay? And you normally have your, your gain. This is called your gains. It's called your gains. You got your gains dialed down, kind of low, and you're flying happy, but you're really getting rocked it around and you're really moving. Then you dial them gains up a little bit to have the plane better correct itself as it's flying along, so you have a more enjoyable flight experience. You say, well, what happens if you go all the way up to really correct? Well, the problem with that is if you get going too fast, sometimes it overcorrects, and look what happened. The, the, the control services are bouncing back and forth and causes you to go into what's called a, a, to a uh, oscillation effect. Or if you, you compensate against compensate against compensate, you start doing this number here. So lots of times that's more prevalent in fast moving planes. But say you took us into a dive, you can start isolating it and next thing you know your plane's out of control. So you dial that down, you've got too much correction. Okay, That's why it's nice to have that on a roller, that way you can adjust on the fly to the conditions that you're flying in. So if you dial them down, you don't have as much correction, but you're flying nice. It's, if you start oscillating, then you dial it down. If, you, if you're starting to get blown all over the place, you know, then you bump it back up a little bit. You find that sweet spot for each day. And that's something you're trying to figure out in that first, that first circle around, your first circuit. Okay, now, we have covered how you take a ready-to-fly model that's dedicated to one transmitter or one receiver. I've told you how to remove that, how to install a Spectrum AR630. I've showed you how to bind that, how to get your basic profile of the plane, how to name it, set up, okay? And then I've shown you how to ensure that your control servers are working correctly because you have to do that before you can start anything with floor programming. And luckily, just so by chance, my ailerons were backwards and I showed you how to correct that. Okay, so now you've got that. You say, well, well I hear all this malarkey and stuff about uh, timers and AS3 or, or, or uh, rates and dual rates and... Uh, what is all that stuff? I don't understand it. Let's put it in here. Why not? We got it. Why not use it? All right. Rates, okay, is how far you want your control service to move. Sometimes that's called the throw, okay? Watch my elevator. I'm going to pull back on my elevator and it goes up. And I'm going to push down on my elevator and get it goes down. As of right now, I have the travel set to 100% down and 100% up. Okay? Some models, okay, that may not be a good thing. Like jets and stuff, they fly so fast, you may not want 100%. Okay? You may only want 50 or 60%. It depends on the model. 
But for a plane like this, I recommend 100% and then so much Expo. We'll get to Expo in a minute. But let's just go ahead for argument's sake. Let's go ahead and put two rates in. We'll do a high rate and a low rate. You hear that terminology all the time, and that's the most common, high rate and low rate. Okay, again, we're going to use a three position switch because that's just the way I am. But I'm going to show you how to do rates, and I'll show you how that looks on the plane. Okay, so you're going to come here, rates and expo. We'll talk about expo in a minute. Look, my, there's my aileron. Great. See that thing moving back and forth? That shows the rates at 100%. Oh, okay. Now, what you want to do, if you want to assign this to a switch where you can change those rates, change how much that moves, then you're going to have to pick the switch. So you're going to come down here to switch, highlight it, and then toggle the switch. I like G for my rates, okay? And I liked the G furthest away, in other words, in the lowest position to be my low rate, okay? So I'm in the lowest position, the furthest down, okay? Then I'm going, I got G, I'm going to leave it on G. Then I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to take that down to 70, okay? All right, now we'll talk about, then I'm going to go here to Expo, okay? We'll talk about Expo here in just a minute. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, oh, I screwed it up. Hold on. Oh, pause for a second. Okay, I had to get the switch back in the right order. Okay, I'm in the low position. I'm at 70%, right? Now, I want to put in Expo. Just bear with me for right now. A little plane like this, 30% Expo. Okay. Now, I want to do a high rate. So it's highest position. Well, looky there. That switched to two, which is the second, the second position for the switch. Zero, one, zero, one, two. And we're going to go ahead and leave it in, in, at 100% because I want 100% thrill, th travel. Okay. And I'm going to put 30% Expo. Real quick, I'm going to go ahead and do the same process to my elevator. Go down here to switch. Hit G. Okay. Put in a low position. Take it down to 70. Put my expo. We'll talk about expo. And don't, don't worry, I'll get to expo in just a second. I'll explain that to you. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my high. Take my expo to 30. Real quick, okay. And now the last control service will be my rudder. I'm gonna take a uh, pick my switch real quick, which is G. Okay, I'm in my low position. Take it down to 70. Okay, put my expo to 30. All right, all right. Now you saw what I did. I'm in my low position so my ailerons are now only going to move pay close attention to how far those ailerons are moving right now i'm going to go to my high position see they're significantly more okay now low position on my elevator 70 percent throws all right watch that elevator high rates significantly more low on ele on rudder only 70 percent throws okay high much more okay talk to you about expo yeah i've shown you high rate i've shown you low rate high rate 100 percent over 30 percent expo all the way around low rate 70 percent throws with 30 percent expo all the way around on all three control services Think of Expo as you have like a, an arc, okay? Or you put your hand in the sand. Push your hand through the sand, okay? And at some point, as your hand comes up, it frees itself of the sand, okay? 
If I had no Expo, I would have no sand. In other words, I have complete, uninhibited control, right? If I had 10% Expo, for the first 10% of that arc, my hand's going to move slower because it's dragging in the sand, and then it's freed from the sand, okay? 30% Expo, in other words, 20% more, it's now going to move much slower before it's freed and moved to 100%. So translate that into a stick movement, okay? If I have low rate, of, or I have, so let's just say I have high rate on my aileron, and I have no expo, okay, then that's, I'm going to have immediate, immediate. However, with a beginner, and, and, and all of us, you can get used to flying, you don't always want immediate. Sometimes you want a little more gradual. Okay, like I, if I need, if I want, if I'm going to get in trouble, I want, I want to hit really quick to get out of the way. But now that now my flight's all messed up, but at least I'm out of trouble, right? But if I'm wanting to have a nice, precise, wonderful flight that's nice and, and, and linear and smooth, then the expo evens that out a little bit. It slows, it makes them controls a little bit softer. They move a little more elegantly is a good way of putting it, okay? They don't quite, they're not quite so jerky. You get, you're, you're, you're not, you're, you're more flying like this instead of like that. Hopefully that isn't as clear as mud, but that's what Expo, it has to do with slowing or dampening the first set's amount of travel through the arc to the complete mode. Now, you say, well, the, well what, what about the 70% or the lower percent? Well, it's the same thing. It's just instead of going 100%, you're only going 70%. But the Expo still works the same. So this is why we would say low rates, Expo for a beginner. Okay? The controls are softer, and you have a better looking uh, flight performance, so to speak. Um, but you don't have too much Expo because then... You don't have enough reaction, and if you get in trouble, you're going to really have to really pull back and move to get out of trouble. That's why you only want, you know, no more than, say, 30% expo. Now, some things you do more, depending on the airplane, but for a basic airplane, 100% throws, 30% expo, perfect. Beginner mode, 70% with 30% expo. It's perfect. I hope that, that explained expo. You're going to say, okay, well, you said something about timers. Well, let's set a timer, okay? Now... If you had a smart ESC in this plane that had telemetry, then you could go on here and it could tell you how much battery life and how much... Well, we don't have all that, okay? We don't have all that right now, okay? We just got a basic setup, and that's fine. That's actually what I prefer. But let's go down here to timer, okay? For a 1,300 milliamp battery, five-minute timer is perfect for this, okay? All right, and that timer doesn't start until you hit the 25% or more on your throttle stick. Hit next. Hit next. And here's where you want to have these audio call-outs for your timer. I don't like this inhibited. I want to hear it. So I like, I like to have just the... Well, hold on. I go back. My, my roller is so sensitive, I barely touch it and it automatically clears. Okay? But that's just because I have a very worn-in... NX10 is all that is. Just changes to any way that you like this. Okay. I like voice on almost all of it. There's one I like voice and vibe. And that's not that one. It's on this one here. When this thing, when my time's expired, I want to know about it. Okay. And I like voice too on that one. My, my Like I say, my roller or my enter button is very sensitive. Now, here, all right, my prop, look what happens. Hear that beeping? Every time I hit that throttle, that drives me nuts. Okay, let me show you how to turn that off. Since you're already here, the very last page of timer, go to here and inhibit all three of these. I'm not telling you you have to do this. I'm just, this is just a personal preference for me. Okay. All right. Now, we have our timer set that's going to call out one minute two minutes, three minutes, you know, time expired, land a dang plane. <laughs> okay, that's that. So we got the basic timer set up for five minutes. It'll tell you when you need to land your plane. It'll say time expired. 
Whenever you get down to the 10 second count where it goes 9, 8, 7, you need to be thinking, you need to be lining up for, for a landing. And really, when you got your one, when you're down to your one minute timer, start setting up your landing, get ready to land. Okay? But now you can hit safe mode and bring that puppy in nice, lander and safe, and you're good to go. <laughs> All right, folks, we've covered out how to use forward programming in a very simplified format. I've showed you how to take a ready-to-fly plane and convert it to use it with your transmitter that you're used to or you bought for yourself. And, folks, one of the reasons I wanted to do this is just like a professional musician, okay, a, say a violinist. Yeah, he can pick up any violin and he can play with it, right? He can play that violin. But he's got that one violin that he does all his concert with. That's the one his money maker. Or that's the one he likes. Well, that's my NX-10. Okay, asking me to fly someone else's plane with a transmitter I've never picked up before. It's like ugh, it feels weird. It's like using someone else's toothbrush. It doesn't feel right in my hands. This feels right in my hands. So I wanted to do this. So it benefits me, but also benefited you by showing you how to take this plane. That way you don't have to buy a whole new setup. You can, if you've got this plane, you can say, well, I still want to fly this, and I, now i got me this transmitter. I want to buy a Spectrum receiver, and I want to keep safe and all that. Well, I've just showed you how to do that. The only thing is, is now you can take this, and you now have uh, one model. You've only got 249 more to go because that's what this will hold. Um, okay. <laughs> it's a very addictive hobby. Folks, I hope this has helped you, those of you who are trying to figure out how to do forward programming, how to make a basic model, take it from a beginner model and, and where you can grow with it. This is where your money is. This is where you invest your transmitter. That's where you put your most money. You'll find in this hobby, if you're in it long enough, the money's in batteries and transmitters. The models come and go. The planes come and go. Your transmitter and your batteries is where you're putting your money at and invest in a good charger. Let me just show you real quick, while we're here, my charging setup. Okay? What do you got up here, folks? I got four Spectrum Smart Chargers. Okay? Those are good chargers. If, you, if your money's tight, just get one of these or what is the equivalent of one right now. Okay? Spectrum Chargers are awesome. They won't let your battery blow up on you. They'll discharge your battery for you. They'll keep, they'll keep things a lot safer for you. All right. The next time you see me with this plane, I'm going to fly it. That battery, just like it is, just the way I showed you. And we'll do safe. We'll do no S3X. We'll do some tricks. And I'll show you how you can unleash this great little plane and the fun that you can have with it. Let me show you real quick before you go something else you can do with this plane. Remember I said that I had another trekker? Well, I do. And it is the official Fat Guy Flyer. And it is an Arrows Trekker also. Okay? The only thing is, this has no gyro. It's just got an AR-410, no gyro. Nothing like that in there. I've added lights. I've given a custom paint job. She has seen better days. She has rolled over. But make no mistake, she's an aerial trekker. But uh, <laughs> I just modified her to make her personal. I got landing lights on her. Um, got lights on the wing tips. And uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun with this plane. I'll fly both of these today. Someone asked me, they challenged me, they said, we want to see the customized flyer. Well, now you can understand why. <laughs> if that guy flies RC. Now you can understand why I uh, chose a different, because now I have two trackers, and i got to be able to distinguish between one and the other in the, in the uh, transmitter. All right, folks. Well, thank you so much for watching. We're going to take both these planes out and have a blast with them, hopefully later this afternoon. <laughs> Weather goes well. Folks, thank you for watching. God bless each and every one of you. Hobby Zone, thank you for sending me out this plane. I bought this one. You sent me this one. And thank you for that transit, that receiver. And uh, so I can explain to these folks how to do this. It's the best hobby in the world as far as I'm concerned. God bless y'all. Bye-bye.
I have to turn it off now.